Today, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I'm gonna stop hating on Cardano and make the strongest possible case for them. Now, why the heck am I doing this? Well, it's called a steel man thought exercise, and it's where I take a project that I normally dislike and defend it as best I can. The whole point is to challenge my biases and make me a better investor. So as I was building my case for Cardano, I found nine points in total. Five of them are the strongest advantages of Cardano, while four of them are my rebuttals against their most common criticisms. I'm super curious if this will change your view because it sure changed mine. Okay, so the first strong advantage of Cardano is that it is incredibly decentralized. For example, they have 70% of their circulating supply staked and over 31 100 staking pools to choose from. This is among the best across all layer one blockchains and Cardano's 3100 validators puts it way above competitors such as Avalanche's 1200 or Solana's 1900. If we look closer, we see that single pool operators account for 72% of the overall pools and 22% of the active stake. This is great because it's better for these smaller single pool operators to get more of the stake than have a few big entities dominate the whole thing. Speaking of big entities, Binance has the largest staking group, but it still only accounts for 11% of the overall stake. So things look really healthy when it comes to decentralization, and I gotta give them props for that. Now, if you're wondering why they're so decentralized, I see two potential explanations. The first is Cardano's K parameter. This decreases a pool's staking reward when it becomes oversaturated, so people are then incentivized to spread out their stake. The second is that Cardano's community is super proud of the decentralization. If you follow their community discussions, you'll see them always trying to improve this aspect of their network. That's why I'm confident that they'll stay decentralized because they actually care about it, unlike some of their competitors. Now, the second advantage of Cardano is that they have a massive upgrade coming soon. It's their Vassal upgrade. And this isn't gonna be some small bug fix. It's going to 10X their network's capabilities. The three biggest changes it will bring are A, more scalability, B, more powerful smart contracts, and C, more interoperability between Cardano's and other blockchains. This upgrade could single-handedly put an end to a lot of the criticisms against Cardano, so people are eagerly waiting for it. Now, this does require them to actually launch the upgrade because it's been delayed twice already, but they recently launched it on their testnet, so it really looks like it's coming soon. Okay, so that upgrade is on the horizon, but let's talk about Cardano's smart contract language, which brings some more fundamental benefits to the table. So the language is called Plutus, and it's based on an old school programming language called Haskell. I'm not gonna go too deep here, but just know that Plutus is extremely different from Ethereum's Solidity. Almost everything about those two are different, which shouldn't be surprising given that they come from completely different programming paradigms. Now there's a ton of benefits to the Plutus language, but most of them stem from the fact that it uses a functional programming language. This means that their smart contracts are easier to test and you can prove with mathematical certainty that they'll behave as you expect. No more weird edge cases that'll accidentally cause a million dollar hack. In general, Plutus gives you higher assurance and better reliability when it comes to smart contracts. And that's really what you want if you're building a global financial app. Now, Plutus is admittedly difficult to learn, but given its many benefits, it seems like a good idea to stick with it and take the time to build an ecosystem around it. Okay, so Plutus is cool, but another killer advantage of Cardano is their two layers architecture. Instead of running everything on one layer, Cardano splits their blockchain to have both a settlement layer and a computation layer. The settlement layer keeps track of all the addresses and how many tokens they have, while the computation layer handles the logic behind the tokens moving around. It's where the smart contracts live. Other blockchains try to do it all on one layer, but as we've seen, that causes some serious efficiency issues. Meanwhile, Cardano's approach gives them a lot more flexibility and lets them do things like settle transactions even as the network is being forked or updated. Now, we're just halfway through my case right now, but I bet Cardano is already looking much better than before. But here's the thing, ADA and all of the cryptocurrencies are not going to rock it as long as inflation is running hot and the Fed is raising rates. But there is one asset class that kind of bucks the trend when it comes to this macro environment. And that's contemporary art. If you look at the numbers, contemporary art prices have outperformed the S&P 500 by 164% for the past few decades. The last time inflation was this high, 
contemporary art had better appreciation than gold, real estate, and the S&P. But when have we ever been able to afford a Picasso, right? Traditionally, this has been an asset class that only billionaires can get in on. Well, Masterworks is changing all of that because they're democratizing the process and letting normal people like you and I get in. It's actually really simple. They buy some artwork, securitize it with the SEC, and then you're able to buy shares of it on their website. To date, they have sold five paintings with an average net return of 26.8%, and that's through COVID, a bear market, and scathing inflation. Legally, I do have to add that past performance is no indication of future results, but to me, this looks like an interesting opportunity, especially because it's not correlated to stocks, bonds, and crypto. So if you wanna go check them out, then go to masterworks.art slash coinsider, or just click the link below. And thank you, Masterworks, for sponsoring this video. All right, back to Cardano, and we gotta talk about their unique way of keeping records for their blockchain through a model called EUTXO. You see, Cardano decided to be different different from Ethereum when it shunned the account-based model for something closer to Bitcoin's UTXO model. I won't go too deep here, but a simple analogy is that UTXO is more like cash, where you can hold bills in your wallet and combine them in different ways to pay for stuff, whereas account-based systems are more like debit cards that have to read and write from a central bank balance. Now, of course, there are trade-offs between these two models, but I want to focus on the advantages of EUTXO. First, UTXO is designed so that you can create a transaction or output from your address as long as you have the required amount of inputs going into your address. So Cardano transactions have the special property of guaranteed execution as long as all the relevant inputs are there. This is very different from account-based systems where transactions fail all the time if something changes in the network while your transaction is being executed. Second, the EUTXO model allows Cardano nodes to execute transactions in parallel as long as they don't consume the same inputs. This makes them way more scalable than account-based systems that process transactions one by one within a block. And third, transaction fees can be determined precisely Precisely before sending the transaction. This is way better for users than in Ethereum, where sometimes we send a transaction, but the fee ends up way higher than what was expected. Now, there's a lot more benefits to UTXO, but this should give you an idea of why Cardano chose this model while their peers use something else. Okay, so those are my strongest advantages of Cardano, but my case wouldn't be complete if I ignored the top criticisms against them. So let's take the most common ones and address them one by one. The first would have to be the infamous concurrency issue, because that's been the source of a lot of FUD over the past year. Remember what happened to their min swap decks? It had to shut down because user transactions were failing due to this issue. But why did that happen? Well, it's because each Cardano smart contract is associated with one UTXO. And when everyone tries to interact with the same smart contract, they'd be trying to access that same UTXO and that violates the rules of the system. This is really oversimplified, of course, but it should give you an idea of why it's called the concurrency issue, because it occurs when people try to use dApps at the same time. But here's the thing, both UTXO and account-based systems are capable of the same things. It's just that information is organized and processed differently. So you can't just port over Ethereum dApps and expect them to work properly. You gotta design them differently from the ground up. And that's exactly what Cardano builders are doing. There are several teams building their own DEXs that solve this problem in different ways. I read a couple articles summarizing their solutions and I came away impressed. I'll just say that some look more promising than others, but ultimately, I think one ideal solution will emerge. Now, another criticism that we've heard over and over again is that Cardano is a ghost town with no real adoption. Well, that may have been true in the past, but it's just not the case anymore. Check out this chart of their average blockchain load. Their blocks are quite full, and earlier this year, they were at 80 to 90% capacity consistently. Also, their developer activity is absolutely popping. Just check out this report done by Santiment. Cardano ranked number one in terms of commits and active contributors for all of 2021. Seriously, no other crypto project beat them at either of those metrics. It's not just their core team though. A ton of builders are coming to their ecosystem. Cardano's parent company, IOHK, has been tracking over 1,000 projects being built on Cardano. So point is, there's some serious action going on in Cardano land and it's not a ghost town by any stretch. 
Now, another big criticism against Cardano is that choosing Haskell as their programming language was a mistake. People love to point out that Haskell is a difficult language to learn and that there's not a lot of devs out there with experience in it, but maybe that's an acceptable trade-off given the benefits. Haskell is more precise and secure, so it's better suited for financial products. Safety and reliability is what institutions care about after all. They're not gonna put their client funds into a dApp that make it hacked the next day. And while Haskell is not foolproof by any stretch, it sure is an improvement on the status quo. There's also another benefit of Haskell, and it's that both on-chain and off-chain code can be written in the same language. On the other hand, Ethereum dApps require you to write code in both Solidity and some other language like JavaScript to handle the off-chain stuff. But Cardano's Plutus is based on Haskell, so you can use just one code base to write your entire dApp. And that just makes things more easy and clean. And the last thing here is that Haskell has a rich body of research to lean on. It's been used in academia for decades after all. So from that perspective, it's arguably better to use Haskell than reinvent the wheel with some new and unproven language. Now there's still one criticism missing, and that's the one calling out Cardano for all the delays and slow development in the past. But here's the thing, I don't think that's a fair criticism because Ethereum has also faced major delays before and people are much more willing to give them a pass than Cardano. Also, maybe this slow but careful approach is better compared to the move fast and break things approach that Solana famously takes. Like, of course, Cardano could just release their upgrade, slap a beta tag on it and be like, well, it's only beta if any issues pop up. Either way, Cardano has momentum when it comes to the development progress because they have smart contracts out and they're about to launch their next big upgrade too. So this criticism is getting weaker and weaker every day. Well, there you have it, my strongest case for Cardano. What do you think about it? By the way, this does not mean that I'm all in on Cardano now. This was just a steel man thought exercise after all. But you gotta watch these videos if you wanna see my previous critiques of Cardano.